Today we are with uh, Greg Fisher. Uh, Greg is a, a good friend of mine and uh, one of the most creative people that I've uh, that I've interacted with. So I'm really excited to see what he has to say today about ways to help grow your business. Um, so Greg, to get started, let's just jump in here. Why don't you tell a little bit about yourself um, and your background? Yeah, thanks for having me, Ben. Uh, Again, Greg Fisher, I have a company called Force Multiplier Strategy. We are headquartered out of Richmond, Virginia, and really was started uh, in 2021 with a mission to help brands deliver more value to the people they serve. And so uh, in doing that, we really try to help people fight the waste that's inside of their organization, find it and eliminate it. Uh, unlock more brand potential and then drive actions that will create a, a greater impact in their bottom line and in their consumers' lives. So um, before starting that, I spent over 20 years in creative advertising agencies in both New York, San Francisco, and then my last um, five years was here in Richmond with the Martin Agency. All right, so, terrific. Yeah. Do you focus on... Is there like, people talk about B2B, B2C? Do you have a certain area of focus or do you do it all? Uh, you know, um, I really started the business with a focus on B2B, but have really done work across both B2B and B2C. Really with a looking for almost what I would call modern challenger brands. And okay. so if, if you think of initial challenger brands as being brands that were going up against the convention of the industry, I think that's still important, but I'm really looking for the brands that are doing that and radically trying to serve customers, like serve the needs of customers. And so that would be my my niche. I love B2B in part because I think the struggle of um, the two struggles they have is one is a really long decision journey and two just the complication that happens with so many people touching the customers over a 10 to 18 month time period, the need to build consistency in both brand and customer experience really lends particularly to what I do. You know, I think if, if you think of um, a lot of what we were doing at the Martin agency brands like Oreo, you're not doing a whole heck of a lot of research before buying an Oreo, Oreo cookie, the importance is just make sure that you're creating mental availability so that when somebody sees it on the shelf, they want it. I think with with higher, I guess I would say with higher decision brands, I right. I look to work with brands that have a have a more um thoughtful decision process, higher, higher ticket items, uh pr product choices that just take have a bigger impact on on people's lives are really what I'm looking at. Right, right, right now. That's a good point. So you've worked with um, a wide variety of brands at different phases uh, of, of growth. What just sort of generally would you say are some of the keys, just the fundamentals for a business looking to grow? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And for me, um, I would say growth is about focus and unity, right? They, they always say, what strategy? Strategy is eliminating choices and being really focused. And if I was going to say there's three areas of that, it's like, hey, no matter how big you are, or in particularly if you're just starting up, do you really have a focus on your why? Do you know your story? Can you clearly articulate that? Um, because when you can do that, and as you scale, like as a founder, you can tell that story one-to-one -one in a room. But at right. some point, that scale, as you scale, you lose that. And if you don't have everybody on mission, you're just going to be having a lot of waste and your brand is going to be diluted and your sales potential is going to be diluted through that. Um, so that, to me, one area of focus. And then do you understand and have a focus on a customer and understand their needs, right? So much of what I see, and we'll probably talk about this later, but so much of what I see in marketing is, what do I need people to do for me right. to have my business grow? Right. And I think the reality is we need to understand what customers need to be confident in doing business with us. And right. so really having a clear sense of who my customer is and what is their need across their decision journey is important so that we can be creating that value. 
Um, and I think, Jen, the third thing in this growth, so I understand my customer, I understand their needs. And then it's really about rallying the team. Do we have a unified team going out in that mission and vision, meeting those needs together? Because right. it, again, I think so So many people touch this customer. If we're going to grow, we need to do that in unity. Right. No, that's a great, those are three great points. So having a unified vision, understanding what the customer needs is trying to accomplish and making sure everyone's working together to accomplish that. Yes. You know, in our, in our work, I mean, that it seems like a, a number of those things are, um, are, are haven't been top priority. Like someone has a great idea. They say, we're going to go execute against this. But I, I definitely think that's a, by not being focused on that, it, it hinders them in terms of their growth moving forward. So I think those are three great points. Yeah, if, well, if I, I was going to build on okay. that just for a second, as the, when you think about this, you're going to have a, like a really charismatic leader with a great idea that is going to fuel you so far. Right. And I think, again, it's when that gets diluted, and I've seen this with big enterprise companies billion dollar companies where the CEO can't be everywhere talking to every customer and, and having that portray and having that story come out. And that's often when brands plateau, right. they, they get the, the easy wins. They find the, the gap in the market that gets them, you know, some percentage of the way there. And then the competition gets harder. And if you're not relevant, and differentiate, and if you can't sustain that difference, you're really going to, you're going to peter out or, or lose. Yeah. Sleep. yeah, we were just having this conversation the other day is that we had a client and if the CEO was able to sit down with the prospect, he was able to sell them like every time, but they weren't, he, but they weren't able to scale that messaging at all because, so he's in the room, he's able to sell them. But when it's like his marketing team or, you know, a BDR on the sales team, like they just don't have the same knowledge and passion. And so it, you could definitely like directly see how it was impacting their growth. Yeah. And so part of what we do is, try to capture that lightning in the bottle that's inside of that CEO or the core leadership and find ways to simply communicate that to the team. Right. So they have that context and they're working off of that same foundation. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. What would you say, I mean, obviously those are ways for a company to grow. Is there anything that you've seen that you'd say, okay, I know this company is not going to grow, like some factors that would keep a company from growing? To me, silos are mm -hmm. are a, a can become a really big barrier, and um, you know the the idea of like the highway to hell is paved with good intentions. Okay. I think there's a lot uh, that operationally we do to create efficiencies, to give ownership, to create a competitive environment within the organization, but those same things uh, can often make a team incentivized to think about themselves and not the customer. Right. Inadvertently, like, right. We, we do what we're measured on. And if we, if we're creating these silos, we're often creating a disjointed customer experience and customers don't really tolerate that. And so, right. you know, you'll see, and a lot of times, I'm sure a lot of companies you'll see, we don't have a pipeline issue. It's it's not getting the first date that it's our problem. It's just that we lose people or we lose customers. We're not keeping them. And that those silos are often the problem with that. Right. So what, in, in your experience, what's a way to overcome that? Yeah. For me, uh, the I just really want to be ruthlessly customer centered. Right. If we can rally teams, even if it's a simple version of a customer centric customer journey where we can understand the needs and understand how teams um like if you if you think of it's more of a race with a what do you like a relay race if we right. can understand our teams are working in a relay race and we have clear handoffs that can really smooth over a lot of problems and the the thing i see in that also is 
there's always a lot of knowledge inside of the company right. um, that maybe teams don't know the right questions to ask to unlock. So the democratization of knowledge is incredibly hard at times right. uh, because it's threatening the individual teams to, to release some of their knowledge to the, to the, the competition within the company. But the more you can do that and foster that winning as a team, I believe the better you can grow. Yeah, absolutely. I think those are some great points. We were working with a client in their process and some of it, their sales process and some of it was based on how they were gold is that the BDR would receive the call. And then if it got to a certain point, they would want to transfer them to the AE. But the problem was like, that was not like a seamless transfer. So the the prospect is sitting there waiting to make sure that they're able to transfer them. And so that was like very not customer focused. Like they had their reasons for doing it that were that were based on metrics. But at the end of the day, the customer was really the one who was suffering. And so you could, if you listen to the recordings at times, you could hear people just being frustrated because they didn't want to sit there and wait. Um, they were just, you know, they really just want to know more about the product or how it could benefit them. And they didn't want to, they didn't want to have to uh, follow the sales team's process, which was put in place for, for reasons that were not customer focused. Yeah. And that's, um, if you ask me something I'm shocked about is how much of business operates that way. And again, it's understandable because you need an operating plan. People need to have roles and responsibilities, but the notion that those things are built on what makes it easiest for the business to operate, not what's best for the customer. Uh, those cards show. And in a world of, of heightened expectations, right? Like we, our expectations, our choice, our access to information is at all time high. Right. We we can't expect people to wait around for our process. We need to make right. sure our process is built on serving them. Right. And I'm guessing based on the work that you're, I mean, the, the customer journey has gotten a lot more complex to your point. Um, like how do you provide insight in like what that customer journey looks like? Is there any, any sort of takeaways you have in terms of how people are making decisions now, um, you know, whether it's channels or people who they're talking to, any thoughts on that? Yeah, it's, it, it is tricky. Um, I mean, I think it's interesting, particularly if you're in a B2B business scenario as marketers, let's talk to the salespeople as much as possible, right? right. Because the salespeople, right, they're solution selling, they're hearing problems every day. They're they're seeing what's working. And I think there's a combination. If, if I was doing this and you had to do it in a day, I think even just getting teams together and thinking about what do people need and what are being realistic about the different stages of the journey, recognizing um, customers aren't thinking about your product every day. I mean, I thought it was fascinating. I saw the old CMO of uh, Coca-Cola speak once and he's like, it was important. Coca-Cola would forget that people don't wake up every morning wondering what's happening with Coca-Cola. Like even a brand as big and as part of culture as this, like that's, that's not what they're thinking about. We need to, we need to know what they're thinking about and inject ourselves into that. Right. And with B2B, I think today, there's a great opportunity in that with just this idea of we know ourselves, everybody's trying to do more with less right. and they want to get ahead. They want to be knowledgeable. They want to think beyond the day to day tasks. But most of us are living lives on our heels. So how can we help? How can we help them in that moment and then meet them at every step of their process to give them confidence that they're doing a, getting a solution that's best for their company and best for their career. And right, so right. I think there's some, I mean, I find with B2B, there's so much research out there, especially if you're looking at what's going on with C-suite, but interviewing customers, keeping a good dialogue with customers, keeping a good dialogue with the sales team, and then tracking what people are doing with your content and learning and optimizing is important. Right, absolutely. And I think you have a, I, I'm going to put you on the spot here, but it's sort of an interesting perspective on this. Do you feel like 
B2B marketers could learn more from B2C marketers or vice versa? Yeah, I would say um, what, and I think this is probably fairly, it's it's not as universal as you would, I would think, or I would hope, but understanding that it's really business to humans at the end of the day, whether it's B2B or B2C. Um, yeah. I, I think we often in the B2B world think of the decision maker and the, the organizational decision process. And we forget that there's humans at the, uh, navigating it and their attention spans are just as short as they are when it's in the B2C world. So I do think there's a lot to learn about how do we actually create value for people and how do we meet their needs? and. And I think to me, a big a big thought I've had a lot is not just their their organizational needs, but their personal needs. Like everybody is trying to advance up the ladder and get to the next level in their career. And every decision they're making at least has some thought of how it's going to help them be better and better positioned in their business. And I think if we can right. think about that and actually helping this human achieve their goals uh we could do much better work and be much more valuable right no that's a really great i mean that's a great way to articulate it i mean we i always use the example like there are certain brands out there on the b2b space where no one's going to get fired for bringing this like for hubspot for inbound marketing like every if you say i'm gonna bring in hubspot you have thousands of references because people are trying to avoid that i mean this is part of their decision making process they're trying to avoid this risk and what it looks like within their career. And I think it's a really important thing. Like people are trying to say, I'm making a decision that's best for the organization and it's also best for them. And I think addressing these concerns that people have, even on a personal basis, is something that where I do think, you know, from a B2B marketing perspective, is not it isn't it's not something that has been uh, discussed often enough. I do think there's a lot of personal capital that goes in these decisions and addressing that effectively would be really beneficial to many organizations. And I think it starts just like you said, with that perspective, like what's best for the, for people, best for humans, rather than, you know, what does my business process look like or business goals necessarily? Well, and I, I think this idea of, and, you know, the, I've never been, nobody's been fired for buying IBM and I worked on Juniper for a long time. And it was always, nobody's been fired for buying Cisco. Right. You know? So you really need to think as a challenger to that, you really need to understand where those people are really being left behind. Right. Where, where is the where is the small to mid-tier customer being left behind? And what is that experience advantage that you can create? Right. Uh, because you can play into that world that you're not going to get when you're going with these big people that are, are trusted. You also are buying a lot of risk that you're going to have to figure it out on your own and you're not going to get the support you need. So in the B2B world, I think being able to play, play up your experience, like, and your customer centric customer centricity is, uh, can be a real differentiator. Right. Absolutely. What, um, and I'm sure you've touched upon it already, but if you were going to give like a one, like if someone for, for an organization, what would be the next thing you'd recommend them doing just generically in terms of like looking for opportunities to drive growth, even if it's something you mentioned before? Yeah. Well, that's a great question. I mean, I, I think again, one thing I would just make sure is if we understand the journey, I would start working backwards and start closing, closing the gaps, hmm. you know, and, and it could be, all right, well, we've already got, you know, we're not converting enough of this traffic. Well, how do we, how do we set some short-term goals to start learning on each of these and trying new things, right? How right. do we, how do we test and learn our way up and make sure that we're, we're, you know, I, I think of, the, of, of business often like a wind in a windmill. 
right? Mm -hmm. So your, your performance machine is your windmill that's harvesting interest and turning it into revenue. Right. And then you have the creating the wind, like your brand is creating the wind. How do I bring more people in the machine? And then how is the machine being more efficient? And right. I think every company should be thinking about how do you make the windmill better and look for the gaps of where there's great opportunity. And I think, you know, in your business, how is my cert? Am I capturing the, am I harnessing the interest that's already there in search? Am I identifying and harnessing the digital signals that tell me that somebody's in market or am I leaving that up to chance? Right. And then filtering that all through a stronger brand story and having my messaging being tighter and stronger that makes sure that I am relevant, that I'm different and that it's sustainable against the competition. Right. I didn't give you one thing, but I think is your messaging right and tight first. And then let's just start applying that in a customer centric way to start meeting needs. Where, where are we clearly not meeting their needs? Where are we falling short and start closing those gaps? Right. Right. I mean, I think that's a great analogy. It's really, I mean, one thing I would say is, I mean, people always call it demand generation, but for some of these things, I mean, it's really a lot about capturing demand rather than generating demand because, I mean, for, it just in terms of like a category, like if, if you don't, you have to know that you have this need before you're going to go look for a solution. You're not, it's pretty rare. You're just going to be like, oh, I, I think this would be interesting. I'm going to go go look for it. And so I think it's a great analogy. It's like, what can you do to capture uh, those folks who are looking for a solution as effectively as possible. Um, yeah. And, and binding that with your brand story to make sure that it's, it's compelling and they want, and they want to do business with you. Well, and, and I'll tell you, I, one of my big enterprise B2B clients, we did the customer journey work and in the stakeholder interviews, a thing that was probably known, but really revealed was the two-step process of, getting the subject matter expert to recommend you. Right. And then how do you get through the procurement gauntlet? And what we realized is the technical expertise in enterprise security, right? You're, you're speaking to somebody who's fluent in that, and then they need to turn and be fluent in business. And we right. recognize our customers didn't have the knowledge to turn and sell a security solution as a business solution to the board or to procurement. And uh, the bigger, the big competition was coming in more from a business first perspective. Right. And they were eating our lunch, you know, on, on the five yard line. Right, and right. and um, we didn't have control of the boardroom and we didn't have the right presence with the other leaders than making the business case. And so in that work, we realized that there was a lot of growth to happen in just better preparing our customers and helping support them sell internally. Right. No, that's a great, that's a great point. It really is. It's amazing at that point in the funnel, like these changes can have a huge impact on a business. Like it's, yeah. it's amazing to think about if you have a, a blocker there that you're not aware of. I, I mean, it can really, and you would look through the entire funnel and then you, you're missing this blocker and then you, you address it and it, it can really um, impact how many deals you're winning. Um, if you're able to address it effectively, that's a, that's a great point. Yeah. We're leaving, we leave a lot of interest on the table. Right. Right. Like you, you get so close, you spend so much money and effort getting someone to your website getting them to give us your, their real email address. Right. You know, it, it's treating it with the right amount of reverence and not just right. saying, Oh, well, that's just the way we're going to lose right. this big percentage. That means we right. just need more people in. I, I think we, yeah, we should always be getting more people in, but increasing our batting average, you know, will create the best results. Exactly. Exactly. And no, I think that's a great point. A great point to close on. Well, thank you, Greg, for your time today. Um, we definitely appreciate it. And some really great insights about being focused on 
what the customer needs and um and how you can serve them and looking at that customer journey to understand uh the process they're going through and, and how you can serve them through that entire journey so thank you greg for your time today great thank you all right talk soon